this morning, oh God, we invite you in afresh. You have been with us, and we have no doubt that you will continue to be with us. Have your way in our midst this morning, and let your name, oh God, be glorified. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. This morning again, I assure you, God is ever faithful. Amen. You know, last Sunday, we began a series on prayers. Hallelujah. Effecting meaningful change in your life. And I told us that the way to effect a meaningful change in our lives is the way of prayers. Amen. If you walk through darkness, if you walk through the fire, if you're passing through the Red Sea, the way that we have seen others went through it is the way of prayers. No one pray and never succeed. No one prayed and never succeeded. Everyone who had prayed succeeded. Go and find out. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this morning we'll continue and I'll be speaking on walking through your dark seasons. Walking through your dark seasons. Last week I told us we must desire and decide to pray. And beyond that, we must be ready to fulfill the demands of prayers. As we walk through this session this morning, a lot of times we find ourselves in some dark places. Sometimes we suddenly arrive at dark seasons. We suddenly begin to find troubles in our lives. Praise God. But do you know why? The only reason why I can think that we find ourselves in these periods probably might be because of anxieties, because of our fears, sometimes maybe because of the places of our birth. And we find ourselves in these challenges. But when these troubles come, where do we first go? Who do we first consult with? Where is always our first point of call? When we find ourselves in troubles, when we find ourselves in challenges, what do you do? Do you go talk to friends? Do you go talk to family members? Do you go consult with doctors first in times of sicknesses and diseases? Where do you go first? Beloved, I want to say to us this morning that there's nothing wrong in consulting with friends. No, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's wrong to consult with doctors. No, they are there for us. But beloved, the one whom the psalmist says we must look, we must look up to first is God. When David had challenges, the first place he went to is upward. That was the first place where he went. Where does my help come from? From God, the maker of the heavens and the what? And the earth in Psalm 121. Amen. When men regrets, what do they do? They look back. Of course, regret is about the past. You don't regret about things you have not known. When men regret, the normal thing is for them to look back. When fears come around, we look around. Fears make you to look around. Hallelujah. Worries make you to look in. You look inward. It's inside of you that worry, worry develops. Hallelujah. Not from any other place. It is from within. But where does faith look to? It looks up. My faith looks up to thee. 
thou lamp of Calvary. Hallelujah. My faith looks up to you, you lamp of Calvary. Because that is where our help can come from. Your help will not come from anywhere. It will not come from friends. No. It will not come from doctors. No. It will not come from family members. No. It will come from above. Whoever rises up to help you is rising up because the helper of the helpless has arisen on your behalf. I prophesy this morning that the helper of the helpless will look unto you with mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, last week I shared with you from the book of Philippians where Apostle Paul said, I now know how to abase, how to be abased, how to abound, how to be full, and how to be empty. Hallelujah. I have learned to be full and to be empty. I know how to go, to, to go about it. Because he had something working in his life. He says, and I can do all things through Christ. Who does what? Who strengthens me? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Beloved, if you don't know what to do in times of crisis, go to God in prayers. Do what? Now, let's turn our Bibles to James chapter 5. And I read verses 17 and 18 to your hearing. And the Bible says, Elijah was a human being like us. Elijah was a man of our nature. Elijah was a man of light passion. Amen. He says, Elijah was a man of our nature, the way we are. And he prayed to God that it would not rain for three years and six months. He prayed to God for that there shall be no rain for three and a half years. And the Bible says there was no rain. Again in verse 18, the Bible says he prayed again. Hallelujah. He prayed again and what happened? He released rain. Prayer blocked rain. Prayer opened up rain. Which means the weapons we have in our hands is a double-edged sword. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. What you have in your hands is a double-edged sword. A double-edged sword. Praise God. This morning, let's look at the deployment of prayers. The deployment of prayers. Hallelujah. How do we deploy our arsenal? of prayer. How do we? Praise God. Beloved, I'd like to say to us that for believers, prayer should be the key for the day. The key that opens during the day and the key that locks the night. It can open, pros open up your prosperity. It can lock up your sorrows and sadness. It's able to. That's why I said it must be to you the key that opens up the day and to us also the key that locks up locks up the night. That will not have night there will be night seasons. But thank God the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him who does what? Who loved us. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you look at, let's read, before we come back to that James, let's go to Daniel chapter 6. And you look at verse 5 and then maybe 10 and 11. I want to read chapter 6 and verse 5. The Bible says, This man, then this man said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God.
concerning the law of what? Of his God. We shall not find a charge against this Daniel. Not for any reason. Except it is against or in the law of his God. Go to 10 and 11. The Bible says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room, with his windows open, toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. He found that Daniel was praying. You know, last week I, I told us that our prayers must consist of or must be full of what an uttered acts full of adoration full of confession full of thanksgiving and full of supplication hallelujah so daniel went to his own room and they found him there praying and making supplication before his god And they couldn't do anything for him. Eventually, they went to rip him before the king. That man that you appointed is not going to worship your image. He's not going to pray through your own image. And they are, the Bible says they arrested Daniel. If you read the, that entire passage, praise God. They arrested him and took him to the lion's den. But the Bible says the king could not sleep. Early in the morning, he prayed all through the night and came by that place in the morning. God has shown him a vision of the fourth man. I prophesy this morning that the fourth man shall show forth in your situation. And he gathered his people and came down to the lion's den. They went to the mount of the lion's den and called out to Daniel. And Daniel answered. You know why? He had deployed the arsenal of prayers. Amen. When prayer is properly deployed, beloved, something must happen. When we go through the process, it must bring forth a result. I pray this morning that the power of God will rest upon us to, go, to be able to go through the process of prayers. That we will not be praying and be deceiving ourselves. Prayer must not be said in deceit. We are partners and praying together and you heard things against me. We are partners and praying together and I heard things against you. It will not be answered. That's why prayers are said over and over and over and over. People will be jumping up and be sweating and nothing happens. Because it is not properly deployed. If you are not sure of the environment where you are praying, detach yourself and pray alone. Prayer when properly deployed. I assure you, something happens. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed that there shall be no rain. He deployed the prayer arsenals and rain stopped. Now, the second part of that passage in, in verse 18, the next thing that happens is that when prayer is properly deployed, there is deliverance. It delivers. When you deploy properly, it brings deliverance your way. Because Elijah prayed the kind of prayer that he should pray, that he ought to pray, there was deliverance for that land. There was even deliverance for Elijah. When the weapons of prayers are properly deployed, it brings deliverances. It brings testimonies. It brings triumphs. Testimonies will fill your mouth. You will triumph in your situations. I prophesy this morning that somebody will rise up onto his throne of testimonies this month in the name of Jesus. Let's look at verse 16 of Psalm 66. The psalmist says, Come and hear all you who fear God and let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. When prayer brings deliverance your way, 
Beloved, your mouth shall be filled with testimonies. Your lives shall be filled with triumphs. And I declare this morning that over every battle, you shall triumph. I say over every battle, you shall triumph in the name of Jesus Christ. The psalmist says, come and listen to me. All you who fear God, let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. I cried out with my, with my mouth. And he did what? His praise was on my tongue. And he had. If you follow the process, I can assure you, you will reap the proceeds. Let's begin to follow the process. In life, there's a process for all things. When Israel was leaving Egypt, it followed the process. The Bible says, in the process of time, let's follow the process. I can assure you, when we follow the process, we shall reap the proceeds. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and Elijah prayed again. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. The heaven gave rain because he prayed again. He unlocked what he has locked up. That's why I said, prayer is the key that opens the day. And the key that locks up the night. It's a double-edged sword. Amen. I want to admonish you, beloved, not to stop praying. You know why? Because God listens. Don't stop praying because God listens. He's, he's listening. No matter what you say, he does what? He hears. Tell somebody, God hears. Tell me again, God hears. So what must you do? Do all the praying that you can. Do all the what? All the praying that you can by all means that you can do it in all the ways that you understand how to do it pray it for all people not just yourself everyone you can pray for pray for them pray for your friends pray for your pastor pray pray anyhow pray as much as you can pray for all the people that you can and i can assure you as long as you ever can pray god will always answer tell somebody god will always answer let your prayers be filled with or be full of adoration as we see confession thanksgiving supplication let it be full of act hallelujah the men whom the bible recorded as acts of the apostles what did they do they went out in the power of the holy ghost they prayed in the holy ghost they turned their world around it didn't happen ordinarily it happened through prayers i pray this morning that your heavens shall be opened i want us to rise 